Hi everyone. Today we're going to tackle a tricky problem with rhythm and it might not be the most exciting thing to learn how to do in theory but it catches a lot of people out and so particularly when you get to third grade theory level they are going to try and trick you and we have here the two key signatures that people may not be familiar with. We have 3-2 and 6-4. So we're going to have to think about what they mean and why they're tricky and then we need to think about how we could recognise uh, one over the other. Alright, what does 3-2 mean? Now as I've said before on other videos, the bottom number isn't a number. It's representing a particular type of note and 2 represents minimum. So the number 2, so this is telling you there's 3 minims in a bar. So here's a 3-2 bar. Minim, minim, and minim. There's three minims in the bar. So that's easy. And then what's interesting is then when we apply crotchets, there's three groups of two crotchets because there's two crotchets for every minim. That's easy to understand. How many crotchets in a minim? Well, there's two. So three minims and three lots of pairs of crotchets. Now when we come to 6-4, what does the bottom number mean? Well, 4 is representing crotchet. Uh, so, there are, in 6-4, there's 6 crotchets in the bar. Now, that's interesting because that's the same technically as 3-2. In a 3-2 bar, you can have six crotchets. And in a 6-4 bar, you can have six crotchets. But here is the fundamental difference. Here, we are actually counting crotchets. Now, whenever, you can go back to some of my other videos, whenever there are six beats in a bar, they are grouped in threes. That's the system. That is a definitive statement. I like the idea of being able to give a definitive statement. There are not many in this world, but that's one of them. Whenever there are six beats in the bar, the beats are grouped in threes. So it's two groups of three. Now, of course, in some contemporary scores, there are composers who like to break that rule and do their own groupings. But as far as the system, notation system, as far as the system is concerned, there are two groups of three crotchets in 6-4. So what that really means is we have a compound beat. And the compound beat... That's a note value that equals one of the groups of three. So in 6-4, a dotted minimum equals one of the groups of three. So in 6-4, there are two dotted minims. Each dotted minimum representing one of the groups of three crotchets. Right? So there's two groups of three represented by the two dotted minims. So the dotted minimum is the compound beat. There is such a thing. Uh, like 6-8, where you have two dotted crotchets, 6-4 is two dotted minims. And if you think of 6-4 and the first thing that comes to your mind is that it's two dotted minims, then you're thinking the right way. And you'll never be tricked if you think of it that way. Okay, so the big trick with crotchets is that they don't have beams. Like in 6-8, you've got six crotchets, in the, uh, sorry, six quavers in the bar. You've got beams to sort of show the groups of three. But here you've just got crotchets. There are no beams with crotchets. So you don't really see the groups of three. 
just because you don't see the beams doesn't mean they aren't grouped in threes. So, all right, we understand the difference between them. Now we have a little puzzle to solve. Here we have two bars and we're going to have to work out which one is which. So we have to name the time signatures. All right, so we have a bunch of notes there just, you know, scattered across the bar and we're thinking, what on earth is the time signature? Now, step one, pick a value to count. Pick a type of note to count. Uh, that could be a crotchet, a minim, or a quaver. I think in this situation, just looking at the rhythms there, just start with a crotchet and ask yourself, how many crotchets are in that bar? So, there's one crotchet, two quavers makes another crotchet, that's two, there's one and a half, that's three and a half, there's a half, that's four, that's the fifth one, that's the sixth one. So, there are a total of six crotchets in that bar, which means it could be either one of these two. So, it's either going to be three, two, or it's going to be six, four. If we counted quavers here, honestly, it would not work out because um, there'd be 12 quavers in this bar. And if there's 12 quavers in the bar, they have to be grouped in threes, which means there'll be four groups of three, which means we've already broken with this beam here. So, you know, crotchet, quaver, that's the first group of three, quaver, so that doesn't fit at all. So it's not it's not 12, 8, so get that one out of your mind. All right. Now, what we have to do is we have to uh, try the hypothesis. So six, we've counted six crotchets. So let's run with that. If there's six crotchets in the bar, well, we know something about that. If there's six crotchets in the bar, then it would be six, four. Well, we know something about what six, four means. All right. So six, four... It means that the, the crotchets have to be grouped in threes. So we can test this little theory here. If we get ourselves a dotted minimum, and let's see if it lines up. Uh, whoops, I said that was going to be a dotted minimum, didn't I? Uh, let's stick the dot on there. Okay, so we've now placed two dotted minims against these rhythms and we can now tell if the rhythms and the grouping of the rhythms line up to the two dotted minims. Now it starts out okay but then we run into a problem and the problem is that this dotted crotchet here crosses over the halfway point and so because it crosses over it's the wrong groupings. See, you can't cross over the halfway point of a bar. That would have to, if you wanted to have that rhythm as 6 4, then it would have to look like this. You'd have to put the quaver there, and then that would have to be tied. But that's not what it is. We have here a dotted crotchet that's crossing over the halfway point. So, the 6-4 proposition doesn't work. Now, if it's not 6-4, then it leaves one other option. So let's try the other option. And suddenly, you will see that these groupings just work out beautifully. All right, so it's clear that this time signature is 3-2 because look, when you place the three minims, everything lines up. This dotted crotchet comes in beautifully on that second minim. So everything lines up. So that answer is three, two. So that's the time signature. All right. Um, now I know what you're probably thinking. Um, all my students do this to me. If that one's three, two, then you're probably guessing what this one is. But... 
let's not assume. So I'm going to be really annoying and let's make us all work this out the slow way. Just so that you learn. All right. Okay, so again, there's six crotchets in there, but let's see if it works out with three, two. So let's see if it works out with three minims in the bar. You know I'm doing this just to be annoying, um, but there it is. I'm going to do it anyway. There's one minim, there's the second minim, and there's the third minim. And oh gosh, can you see that? Whoops. Where's my, where's my notes going? Look at this. Oh gosh. It doesn't work because this dotted crotchet comes in halfway through that second minim is crossing over that third minim. So it's not working. So this can't be 3-2. Now, do you see how we are testing this? We are coming up with a hypothesis. We know that because how many crotchets are in that bar, 3-2 is a possibility because there's six crotchets in the bar. But we are now proving that this time signature cannot be 3-2 because this dotted crotchet here is confusing that beat structure and it's messing it up. So it's not 3-2, so if it's not 3-2, of course, you can probably all guess what I'm doing here. Let's try 6-4. And sure enough, look now how neat the rhythm groupings are. There's no contradictory rhythmic value getting in the way, causing a mess. So it's 6-4. So you have to play the hypothesis game. Pick a value to count. Count how many are there. Work out what the time signature would be with that value. But then test the groupings. And if you test the groupings, you're all good. And you will never be tricked. And that's my goal, is to make sure students can have either a 3-2 or a 6-4 bar thrown at them and they will not be tricked because they know the issues. So I hope this has all made sense to you. Uh, practice uh, some of the questions. Um, all, the, all the theory uh, systems, both the AMEB, the ABRSM, Trinity, they're all going to be asking you the same questions. So whatever system you're doing, you need to know. All right, now you're in the know. Enjoy, and for goodness sake, don't get tricked. <laughs>